Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Big news over the weekend as Kuala Langat MP Dr. Xavier Jayakumar left PKR on Saturday to support the Perikatan National Government. Now, there were allegations that he had been threatened and pressurized into leaving. And this was his reply when quizzed by reporters today. I stand by the statement that I gave, that's it. Oh, okay. Is it your leaving related to the Siasata SPRM, buddy? There have a lot of talking about that. Thank you. Or is there any anything that I mean are you are not happy with PKR or anything that Thank makes you. you leaving? This was the reply by Kuala Langat MP Xavier Jayakumar when asked if he had left PKR due to pressure from the Malaysian Anti Corruption Commission. On Saturday, Xavier had announced his resignation from PKR and said that he will now support Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin. He said it was necessary to ensure that the government remained stable and to avoid an election. Xavier added that he had grown extremely frustrated due to events that had unfolded over the past year. And the priority now was to support the government's effort to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, create jobs and secure funds to rebuild the economy. However, PKR lawmaker Sivara Sarasya claimed that Xavier was pressured to support Perikata National after a selective probe by the MACC. The MACC had reportedly arrested Xavier's political secretary, aide, and several other individuals in connection with a project in Perak under the Harapan administration. However, MACC Commissioner Azambaki had strongly denied that the MACC was being used as a political tool to pressure opposition lawmakers. Xavier has been a part of PKR since 1998, when the party was still called Partika Adila National. He quickly rose up the ranks and was elected as party vice president during the PKR leadership election as part of former PKR deputy president Azmin Ali's team. AMNO Information Chief Sharil Hamdan had some questions on the arguments that were used to defend Xavier's decision to quit PKR. AMNO Information Chief Sharil Hamdan has questioned the reason by Kuala Langat MP Dr. Xavier Jayakumar on his defection as well as on claims made by several PKR leaders that Xavier had jumped due to pressure and threats. In a Facebook post yesterday, he asked why pressure from the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission would cause Xavier to jump if he is innocent. Sharil also questioned if investigations will come to an end now that he has jumped. He referred to statements made by PKR Vice President Tian Chua and Sungai Buruh MP Sivarasa Rasya on alleged pressure and threats from the government. On Saturday, Sivarasa had claimed that Xavier would not have quit if not for quote selective investigations by the MACC, while Chua said PN was using threats to stay in power. Sharil also questioned if shifting his allegiances to support the government was the only way to manage the economy and to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. The MACC had reportedly arrested Xavier's political secretary, aide and several of his acquaintances in relation to an ongoing case. The anti-graft body previously denied Pakatan Harapan's allegation that it was being used as a political weapon in relation to defections. Xavier is the third PKR member of parliament to defect and support PN this year. The other two were Julao MP Larry Singh and the Bra MP Stephen Chung. In the meantime, PAS is still optimistic about AMNO and Bersatu going into the next general election as allies. PAS Deputy President Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man said that PAS leaders are confident that there are ways to resolve the conflict between AMNO and Bersatu. God willing, there will be light at the end of the tunnel, he said, when asked whether PAS was optimistic about AMNO and Bersatu working together as allies in the 15th general election. He said all three parties must sit together and negotiate a solution. He added that the Mofakat National Secretariat, of which he is a member, has been meeting twice a week and has talked about elections, although not directly. He said their focus is on forging cooperation. Previously, AMNO's leadership has resolved not to work with Bersatu during GE15. However, their National Delegates Assembly on the 27th of March will have the final say. Meanwhile, PAS has also welcomed Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin's promise that Perikatan National was offering a quote, new deal for Malaysians. In a statement today, PAS President Abdul Hadi Awang called on everyone to support PN's moderate approach, concern for the people and welfare while rejecting extremism and opportunistic behaviour which is unsuitable for Malaysia's plural society. Hadi was referring to Muhyiddin's speech during the 49th Gerakan National Delegates Assembly on Saturday. Muhyiddin had said that PN was offering a new deal for Malaysians, which included competent leadership, integrity, political longevity, as well as racial and religious harmony.
Perikata Nasional also seems to be working towards resolving issues between AMNO and Persatu with their information chief Azmin Ali calling for AMNO to discuss about 13 seats that were won under the Barisan National ticket in the 14th general election but are now held by Persatu following defections. The issue is said to have affected the relationship between the two parties. Perikatan Nasional Information Chief Azmin Ali has invited AMNO to return to the negotiating table for discussions. This is over 13 parliamentary seats that are said to have affected the relationship between AMNO and Bersatu. The seats that AMNO won in the 14th general elections fell to Bersatu due to defections. Previously, Barisan National had warned that it would defend all its traditional seats whether it won them in GE14 or through by-elections. In an interview with Sina Harian, Azmin said what is being disputed here are the 13 seats, but they did not have a problem with the remaining 209 seats. He said he thought it was unfair that the entire government could collapse just because of these 13 parliamentary seats. Azmin, who is also the Perikata National Elections Director, added that the coalition already has a formula on the seat negotiations and distribution for GE15. He said parties would defend the incumbent seats, such as Pago remaining with Bersatu as it was won by them. They would also discuss and scrutinize each party's strength for the seats that they lost. Meanwhile, AMNO Elections Director Tajuddin Abdul Rahman indicated that the party will not entertain Azmin's suggestion for negotiation. According to Sina Harian, he said that AMNO's stand is to take back all the areas lost through defections, so there was no need for discussion. The Ministry of Health had a projection for the number of daily COVID-19 positive cases in May, and this was done based on the declining infectivity rate. Malaysia could see daily COVID-19 positive cases fall to around 500 in May. This is according to Health Minister Dr. Adham Baba. In a press conference today, he said the projection was made based on the declining infectivity rate or R0, which was at 0.87 yesterday. However, he said this depended on the people's level of compliance with the standard operating procedures set by the government. Sekiranya SOP ini tidak dapat dipatuhi, RT dijangka akan meningkat semula, melebihi 1.0. Begitu juga dengan bilangan kes harian, iaitu sekiranya tidak dapat patuhi, dia akan meningkat semula. He added that most states had achieved an RT of below 1.0 except for Trengganu and Penang. Meanwhile, Malaysia recorded 1,208 new cases of COVID-19 today. Selangor recorded the highest number of new cases with 379, followed by Sarawak with 251 and Penang with 142. Our last update for today comes as the High Court of Malaysia's ruling on the use of the word Allah by non-Muslims has now moved to the Court of Appeal. An appeal has been made by the Home Minister and the government against a High Court ruling that the word Allah can be used by non-Muslims in Malaysia. The appeal is against a March 10th ruling by the Kuala Lumpur High Court that struck down a 1986 directive forbidding non-Muslims from using the word Allah. According to a copy of the notice of appeal made available to the media, the notice was filed today. Following the High Court ruling last week, the Muafakat National Consultative Committee has urged for the High Court ruling to be referred to the Court of Appeal. Muafakat in a statement had said that the coalition views seriously the High Court decision in allowing non-Muslims to use Islamic words in their publications. That's a wrap for this evening. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. Don't forget, we also post the latest news to our social media on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. So follow us there to get the latest updates. If you like what we do, consider supporting the channel by subscribing and also clicking on the bell icon so you will never miss another news headline. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching. If you're going out, don't forget your mask. And when you can, try staying home. Stay safe, Malaysia, and good night.